uh, Aarti, this is a question from a parent of a teenager. The parent was asking, ma'am, how do I develop my bond with my child, a teenage child? He's invariably locked inside, refuses to talk much, interact much. They feel there's a lot of distance in their relationship. What topics to talk, I'm lost. How do I work on this? Uh, generally, in adolescence, children move away from the family towards the peer group. And not because they dislike the parent. Unfortunately, many parents assume that, you know, children don't like me now. They're always rebelling and things like that. So let's understand it in context, ma'am. They search, they search for identity starts around this time. The adults are no longer ideal and they want to mingle with their own peer group to see people who have similar struggles, similar, um, you know, challenges and things like that to sort of uh, evolve through that. At this point, their brain is also going through severe changes. We call it the second brain revolution in, in many ways. So their emotional systems are more triggered, easily triggered. They're not able to solve problems as fast as they could earlier and things like that. Because a lot of higher skills are also being built into the brain. Considering all of these challenges, as a parent, I must be the one who can co-regulate. Meaning, I need to remain the calm within which the child will be able to express himself or herself and find uh, you know, a way forward. At this point, if they've already cut themselves off, it's probably because, you know, in one or two altercations that they've had or one or two conflicts that they've had already, the parent has been a little controlling or has been, you know, has just dismissed their feelings or minimized what they're feeling. And when I say dismiss, it's like, no, no, what have you seen in your 13 years or yeah. 12 years that I have not seen in my 40 years or whatever. Or the other way is minimizing, Appa, I'm feeling anxious or Amma, I'm feeling anxious. And like Anxiety is not something that is to be uh, looked at. Don't keep reading online and making a self-diagnosis. So these uh, minimize, when the child is trying to communicate, when they've met with this kind of resistance from the parent, children realize that there's no point talking to this person. Let me just cut off. So this is where rebuilding that bond is very, very important. So we start and I almost sound like, you know, those broken records in those times where I keep saying connection rituals yeah, so many yeah. times. But it's so important in today's day and age because we are in smaller and smaller families, fewer interactions outside. And these interactions are limited to, you know, just a party or a dinner where you don't actually nurture relationships. You're just sort of interacting. You're not building a relationship. So the connection ritual typically like I've mentioned many times, is spending about 15 minutes at least with your child, doing something both of you enjoy. And it can be something like a sport, it can be a hobby together, it can be just a chat, playing games. And, but it shouldn't be a time where you are critical, judgmental, uh, you know, advising, lecturing, mor moralizing, all of these things. The child needs to be treated as an equal where they can have healthy discussions. Now, the second thing that needs to be done, once this, and this connection ritual takes between 21 days and 2 months to set depending on how big your rift is. Now, if I've already had a fight several times with my child and, you know, many times these fights are also because my, as a parent, my expectation is my child should be extroverted when my child is naturally an introvert. And I keep pushing them, you know, saying, go and speak to this uncle, go and do this. Or the child is not interested in maths, doesn't want to become an engineer like me, but I want the child to choose engineering because that is something that I believe is the career path. So we've actually, you know, sort of challenged them at a level where they feel my ideas are never going to be heard. So when this level of rift has happened, that connection ritual will take a little more time. Once the ritual has been set, which means the child is feeling comfortable, I need to start uh, developing a way in which I can uh, communicate with them. For this, choose a topic. Now, when you say what topics can I choose, the topics will by and large be determined by the quality of the relationship. I can't suddenly say, okay, today I want to talk to my child about careers. So let me just, you know, bring in some career thing and speak to them. Or today I want to talk to them about mobiles and mobile addiction. I can't suddenly do that. I need to see what are the interests my child has. Just like, you know, if you were meeting a new person, making a new friend, building a new intimate partner relationship, the same rules would work here. 
just like in that courtship that initial courtship in any relationship with my teenager i need to see what could be interesting for my child and with teenagers you know because they're also in the search for identity they tend to keep reading cosmology suddenly and then go into spirituality on another day they do so they have these shifts huge shifts as a parent if i'm responsive to that saying you know i heard you uh, reading this or i heard you uh, being interested in something like this your friends were discussing this can you tell me about it you know this artificial intelligence i don't understand would you like to tell me so when we are trying to work with their interest areas trying to bring in our interest areas can also happen gradually as opposed to i will decide and i will instruct and you have to follow so this is where the topics come in the next thing is to set the right time for speaking because teenagers go go through several mood swings because their brain is going through change when they've had say uh, you know a test in school they didn't do very well they're still ruminating about it at home these kind of things at that point we need to understand we can't suddenly you know entrust something to them so we need to let them know tomorrow at 4 o'clock are you free let's speak about this and set the topic let the child also have enough time to uh, develop or you know uh, think about uh, the prepare you know himself. prepare themselves like you're saying um, you know about the topic so it's about addiction or something like that prepare that and then the most important thing happens keep that appointment if you said 4 o'clock please switch off your mobile please make that time you know sit over a cup of coffee or something make it a very casual chat don't make it one corporate meeting where you know i'm the boss i'm the ceo and you're the you know that kind of thing it's a very casual thing saying remember we thought we'll talk about this shall maybe a date this? going somewhere else uh, it can be any way ma'am because again it it's depends the on the quality of the relationship the time that is available all of these things no? so once we do that we sit down with the child let the child always speak first the most important thing that parents need to understand is when we allow them to start the conversation we are only modeling for them that listen i'm going to be listening to you and i value your opinion as opposed to i will tell you all this That's and then i'll ask you point. extremely ma'am because you know we don't allow them to come forward with their ideas they're never going to understand the value of their voice in today's world when everything has become picture related the quality of the voice and the power of the voice is something that we need to empower our children with you know in that sense let them speak and let them organize their points whatever they're saying make sure that we're uh, making sure that we're constantly there and very aware of what they're saying listening to it and say if you, you this point you mentioned i didn't understand can you tell me again so you're actually letting them know i'm interested in what is happening here once this happens the child is also getting this thing so far they've always advised me lectured me but this time yeah, they're okay. actually listening very actively by that i don't mean don't parrot okay you said this 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 uh. now should it be like this and the child says oh now you're keeping track of everything so it's a genuine conversation much like what we are having right now because we are actually listening to each other though it's a recording we know that so that kind of genuine uh, thing and then once that is done give feedback saying you know these three points that you made are very pertinent i think i need to change my behavior accordingly so we genuinely model for because them because it's a important relationship yes too. that you i value you that your feedback is important for me and that i'm willing to change in relation to that feedback because when i was raised it was a one way communication and i'm sure it in, yeah, you yeah. know it was always that i'll tell you you will follow but now i think with the world changing and the kind of skills required being very different this modeling is required then the last point which is more important if it's a girl make her sit beside you and speak don't sit this way make eye contact make her so uncomfortable it's very important to sit beside and let her speak because not making them conscious in the conversation but uh, you know letting them know that i'm an equal we can have this discussion if it's a boy please walk walk with them because men generally are spatial processors and for them to process language if there is movement along with it they process it better otherwise the teenager is going to be drumming the table moving the leg you know to you less, know twiddling to their fingers and things and it irritates a parent sometimes even teachers like sit quietly you know that kind of thing but they realize that movement sometimes helps boys process information so when we do it in this way it becomes very easy for the parent to reach a point where they realize where communication is falling apart because when we are responsive at that level we realize oh this word probably triggered the child let me reword it we become more responsive and that responsivity helps model for the child how small changes in a relationship make a big impact so by and large that would be the best way to work with the That's child right. thank you ma'am <laughs> just i hope 
most of the teenage parents listen to this and apply it. There are many, many who are lost. Thank you.